Hello everyone, it's Failure Tira, and welcome to the 15 states of this year's La Tour de France of Failure Way. The 15 states from Givors to Mont Ventoux. It's gonna be 220 kilometers of pure flatness. But then, it's gonna hit Mont Ventoux, the bald mountain. I don't think that the Tour de France is won today, but it can, sh it can be sure be lost today, so you gotta be careful in what you do. The big favorites for today's stage has to be Alberto Contador, Christopher Froome, and Joaquim Rodriguez. Those three guys are really showing potential right now. You really gotta watch out for those three guys, what they can do. There's only 13 seconds between Froome and Contador, and whatever happens today, it's gonna, it's gonna have its mark on the rest of the Tour de France. Today is when you can see who's vulnerable. We'll have to see what's gonna happen. This is the first mountain stage since Extrait Ex Domaine, which ends upwards. So we'll have to see what's gonna happen this stage. You have to look on Tour de France the failure way. Hello everyone and welcome to this lovely day where the first mountain really comes. We started off in the morning really nervous, but then a Spaniard attack named Juan Antonio Fletcher. He was soon followed up by another Spaniard named Daniel Lamaro with Jeremy Roy, Jan Bagelands, Kunigo and Brice Fillier. Then they hit the first mountain, which was won by Kunigo, getting two points and Jan Bagelands getting one point. The next category four was won by Jeremy Roy only getting one point, so that won't matter that much. The distance between the peloton and the breakaway was 7 minutes and on this helicopter view we can see that's a lot. Then the peloton had a, sp had a sprint because they didn't really sprint for it in the breakaway up there. So that was, some, that was some strange stuff. And the winner of that sprint was Mark Cavendish in front of Nasa Bohani. Then we had another mountain, a category 3, which was won by Damiano Kunigo in front of Jan Bagelans. Then we had a big attack from Gessink, Malema, Brakovic and Daniel Martin. A double attack from Belkin. They really want to do something. So Saxoban reacted and started pacing. And there's where we are right now. And we see we just had attack. We just have attack from Brakovic, Martin and Malema again. Who just got caught by the pace of the Peloton. Which is set by Lotto Belli Saul. They really think Van der Brook can do something. Also, Mega Farmer Quickstep is setting the pace for their leader. But who's not attacking? Eager Anton is attacking away. Eager Anton is attacking away. We have seen Saxon Bank do almost all the work today. So they must be tired. Their main guys must be tired. But they still have a lot of guys left. And so does Sky. Sky has not paced a single time today. We still see him down here just sitting easily. What is Froome? What is Froome thinking? Froome is thinking he'd rather do Saxon Bank, have Saxon Bank do all the work. Or did they actually get away in the front? It looked like Eager Anton actually got away. He's got almost two minutes now. We need some... Some reaction down the peloton. Everyone is like, Igor Anton, you're seven minutes behind, you're not gonna do anything. But the breakaway's got seven minutes, and Damian Anikunigo is not a bad climber. He might be able to win this up this mountain. If the peloton doesn't start to react, something will happen, and we don't know what. This is strange, nobody's pacing. Now Ulrike Greenhouse is going to the front, but we don't see anybody else really reacting to this. And Igor Anton has got two minutes, 40 seconds right now. Oh my god, the breakaway is getting huge right now. We'll see some teams react to this for sure, because otherwise that'd be really strange if no other team really decided to react on this. Team Saxophone really has to, because if they get 7 minutes, the breakaway, the closest guy, I think is 20 minutes. 23 minutes on Jeremy Roy, I think that was. Yeah, it looks like it. Actually, no, it's Kunigo, he's 20 minutes behind, but you only have like 8 minutes right now, so that won't matter. We can actually see the peloton in the, uh, the pace in the peloton is really accelerated, with Bernardi setting the pace with Jesus and Andes. They're really trying to do something. It seems like Contador really wants to win the stage today. He's really setting a high pace with his teammates. That would really, cut, that would be, really be a hit on him if he did not succeed this because he's using his guys right now and if Sky managed to do a counter attack on this that would hurt him a lot I believe let's see if they're actually gonna manage to do anything right now they're using a lot of their guys to set the pace right now we don't even know if this is gonna be successful Eager and Ton and the breakaway is not really decreasing in their time they still have seven minutes they gotta pace a lot faster if they wanna do anything it seems like and the the mountain is coming up. Mount Van Two is slowly nearing. They really gotta set the pace up. They gotta be sure that they don't gain too much time. We really see a high pace from the peloton right now. They're all just going all they can. Ben Benjamin Naval, Matteo Dosado, Daniel Bernati, and Jesus Hernandez are all pacing trying to catch the breakaway. I think Alberto Contador said that he wants to win the stage. He doesn't wanna just go over the finish line, gain time with the others. He wants to get victories. And we see Andrei Ch and Kacheskin trying to attack, but he didn't really get anywhere with the high pace of the entire peloton. But I think we'll take a quick commercial break and come back when the mountain starts, because we need those commercial breaks. This channel does not find itself. Who do you think is going to win the Tour de France? Michael Murkov isn't in the Tour de France. Try again. And neither is Nicky Sturgeon. Come on, dude. 
Dude, have you been living under a rock? None of those riders are in the Tour de France this year. Oh my god. Well, he's a moron, so why don't you tell me who's gonna win the Tour de France this year? We see the entire Saxo Bank team pacing right now. It looks like something from yesterday where they're really just trying to put some pain in the other guy's face. Right now we see Froome and Contador sitting side by side, and this pace is not really hurting Chris Froome, I don't believe so. He might look a bit tired, but I don't think it's really anything. And we have an attack in the breakaway. Reese for you, Roman, Jeremy Roy, and David Navarro trying to leave the other guys behind. Doesn't look like Kuniko is trying to attack, but now Juan Antonio Fletcher is going. They're leaving Kuniko behind. Doesn't look like Kuniko is ready. But we're more interested in down here in the peloton because now they're hitting one band two. What's going to happen today? Will they do anything exceptional? It looks like Contador's team is really trying to do some pain. They really tried to inflict some pain today. This, they want to win the mountain, the yellow jersey and the mountain jersey and everything. They want to do everything they can. Right now we see Malakan is the first one to get dropped. He's going to have a painful day up. Let's see in the front. They still pacing. Yes, Rogers is setting the pace with Polinio and Nicholas Roach. Oh, they're dropping some guys. He's losing some riders now to help him. Oh, we see Mullum and Brakowicz trying to get away again. The front now still has six minutes, but Igor and Tan only has a minute. But the front, in the front group, they dropped the guy, it looks like. They dropped Jan Bagelans. It'll be not be Jan Bagelans stage today. They're continuing to set the high pace. Thibaut Pinot, Jacob Fulsang is attacking. Reclair, Froome is attacking. They all seem to start attacking right now. They want to get away right now. But it's not helping because Saxo Bank is using the Sky tactic. What? We normally see this from Sky, not from Team Saxo Bank. But this high pace seems to hurt the Peloton. 53 guys have been dropped already. How many will be dropped when Michael Rogers is done pacing? This is something we normally see Richie Port do. But Nicholas Roach, Kreuziger and Roach are all pacing. It doesn't seem like... Oh, Roach. We can see that Rogers is hurting. Rogers is hurting. Christopher Froome is attacking. Everybody's trying to attack right now. But the high pace in the Peloton is really doing something, it looks like. They're really trying to pace. Michael Rogers and Nicholas Roach are pacing together and Contador is sitting there relaxing. The front guy is Valverde right now. The favorite in the front is Valverde with Thibaut Pino right behind him. Hulk Rodriguez right behind him. Pierre Lallan looks like he's hurting with Igor and Tan. We still see Rogers pacing. He's really a workhorse. We should really give him some effort. Saxo Bank should pay him some extra from all that work because he's really doing a hard work right now. We see Kwiatkowski the white jersey trying to attack but he's not getting anywhere because Rogers is setting the pace. Also Nicholas Roach is helping him. Here goes Daniel Martin again. The Irishman is attacking on the American team. It looks like Roach is dying. I don't think Roach has the same pace as Nomi has. Maybe it's time for Contador to try and do something. Rogers still got the pace, but nope, Rogers is sitting down. Here, co here it comes. The final push by Contador is going off. There are only 34 guys left in the front group. It's all due to the work by Saxo Bank, not by the work by Sky. We see Froome to run to attack. There is now 39 guys left, but they're dropping. Heshadal looks in pain. Egan Tony right in front of him. Then you know, that's Thomas McClare looking in pain, but Pierre Volan looks like he's heaven. He looks like he's just easy, but Kreuziger is really having a pain. He's having the pain in his face right now. He can really feel what it is like hitting the brick wall. Let's see, Contador is setting the pace. Now people should start to get dropped. There's only 20 guys left in this front. How much time does he have up to Kunigo, who's in the front? Right now it's Kunigo in the front. How is he doing? We don't know because we're not in his mind right now. Christopher Froome is setting a really high pace with Kim Rodriguez, Tobi Pinu, and Daniel Martin. It's going to be really fast pace up the entire mountain. This is going to be really fast pace. It's going to take like 5 minutes and this is going to be over. But this group still has 3 minutes up to the front group. What's going to happen? In this group, Avert is catching up. Avert is going to go straight by. And he's almost a minute in front of Contador. But now Contador is catching up really fast. He's just a beast. He's a machine. Looks like he's putting a lot of pain in Rodriguez and all these guys. But in the front, Damiano Kunigo is still going alone. A hundred of our right behind him. But he's getting caught right now by Contador. Contador's pace seems to be unbearable for Valverde and Kunigo because they're losing more and more seconds by the minute. We'll see. Every kilometer just seems to go by so fast. Now Chipot Pinot is getting dropped, but Jeremy Roy is out to help him, but he's getting dropped. Christopher Froome is getting dropped. Christopher Froome is getting Getting dropped. Christopher Froome is getting dropped. Second place is dropped right now. Only Daniel Martin and Hulk Rodriguez seem to be able to follow Contador's page. What is happening to Chris Froome? Oh, he seems like coming back now. Even Tipo Pino is doing better than him. But right now, Valverde is in the front. He's doing really good on the Valverde. Damiano Kunigo still got a minute down to Contador. Can Contador catch that minute in 7.5 kilometers? He's definitely catching Valverde, but the question is, can he catch Kunigo to win the stage? Otherwise, all that effort really would be wasted. But the third place, Rodriguez is following Contador's speed. It doesn't look like Froome can handle this. Let's see how much time he's taking Froome right now. He's taking a minute. 
Christopher Froome is losing the Tour de France right here, right now. You're witnessing it live. He's losing. Oh, he's dropping Rodriguez. Contador is going off for the victory. Christopher Froome is dropped. Jorgen Rodriguez is dropped. It's Contador versus Alejandro Valverde. The two Spaniards are going to go against each other for this one. We'll see what's going to happen. In the front, Alejandro Valverde's got 30 seconds down to Contador. But Damian Kunuku is fighting for his life. He wants to keep up with Contador. He's really trying. But he's been all day in the breakaway. He's really trying to keep up. Rodriguez is coming back slowly. But Christopher Froome is losing more and more time. Time. What is up with him? In the front, Alejandro Verde has got 30 minutes. He's really going fast. Will it be a victory for Alejandro Verde? Or will Contador come back? There is 200 meters difference. But up a mountain, that's really a lot. We see all the spectators. Get away, spectators. Don't do anything. We see the American flag, but there's no American guys in the front. This ain't Lance Armstrong. He is no, he's on dope. He's not here. We see Alejandro Verde in the front. Let's see, he's saying go, 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 go on the, on the floor, on the road. No, Contador... Contador is catching up to Valverde. Contador is catching up to Valverde. The last two kilometers is probably going to be a sprint. But Valverde will probably win that because he's faster than Contador. But the big question is now, who's got anything left in the tank? Has Valverde used too many powers trying to get up there? It's going to be a sprint between Valverde and Contador. Unless Contador can go straight by him. We'll have to see. He right now has two minutes and 25 seconds down to Christopher Froome. Oh, Contador's going straight by Valverde. Contador's going straight by Valverde. Oh my god, will this be a sprint or will Contador defend his yellow jersey by a lot? It looks like, it looks like Valverde is dead. Valverde is dead. Valverde can't sprint. It'll be another victory for Alberto Contador. Congratulations to Team Saxo Bank Tinkoff. They really spent their powers brilliantly in this stage. He can now raise his hands up in victory and say he won the Man Man 2 stage. Contador wins. Contador wins. Did you hear it? Contador won. So now we wait for the tail to come in. We see Hockey Rodriguez losing about a minute, looks like. Let's see. He lost actually 2-5, two, 2 minutes 5, Daniel Martin is 2.20. Here comes Christopher Froome. Is he losing more than 3 minutes? Yes! He loses 3 minutes. What a display of power by Contador. The entire peloton is split to pieces. But we want to take an instant replay at... Look at where Christopher Froome got dropped in that mountain. Just imagine if that happens on this mountain. Imagine the Alpe d'Huez, the king stage, what's gonna happen there. But we wanna take an instant replay look. This instant replay is sponsored by Focus Sign and Pro Cycling Manager. We're watching from Christopher Froome's perspective, and he's actually taking water right now. Did he get dropped because of that water bottle? We'll have to see. Right now, he's really bad place because of that water bottle. In the front, we see Contador just setting the pace. He's leaving Christopher Froome behind because of that water bottle. Christopher Froome getting water up this mountain was the stupidest idea he could ever get. Look at this, he's already got like a 50 meter gap. And up Mount Van 2, a 50 meter gap is a lot. Right now you see why they call it the Bald Mountain. There is no grass, it's just pure sand and stone. But here is where Christopher Froome loses the Tour de France probably. But you have to follow the next couple of stages to see if he can revenge, get revenge on the Contador in the yellow jersey. So, Contador gains 30 seconds on Alejandro Valverde, a minute 46 on Joaquin Rodriguez, 2 minutes and 1 on Daniel Martin, 2 minutes and 45 on Christopher Froome. He really just said, you know what, my name is Alberto Contador and I'm the strongest. Impressive by him. And Alberto Contador has now got 3 minutes down to Christopher Froome. 3 minutes, that's a lot. And Alejandro Valverde now takes 3rd place in front of Rodriguez, so uh, Rodriguez lost too much time. Oh my god, he's 3 seconds behind. Let's see, the, yeah, nothing changed well in the green jersey because you get half points on mountain jersey, so Contador could not take this. It's a nice change by UCI or ASO or whoever's in, whoever's in charge of this, I've, I forgot. We'll check the mountain jersey, will that be on Contador's shoulders? Yes, Contador took it away from Robert Gessink and it's now on his shoulders. And he got 7 points down to Alejandro Valverde. We'll probably see Contador both take the mountain jersey and the yellow jersey. Will Team Saxobank think of? Oh wait, it's a white jersey first. Thibaut Pinot took it away from Kwiatkowski. Thibaut Pinot will be in the white jersey. Congratulations to the young Frenchman. I think that the French TV producers are really happy about this because they always love seeing their Frenchies doing good and Thibaut Pinot is an upcoming talent who's really doing good. Let's hope he turns out better than guessing. And now Garmin Sharp just extended their lead to everyone <laughs> by a lot. So surprisingly Garmin Sharp is in this overall team classification doing best. And who do they even have? Daniel Martin, Talansky... Danielson, that's about it. So, thank you guys for watching this epic stage. I mean, look at Eurosport's website. They're saying Contador is the strongest, and we all know that's true. So, thank you guys for watching. Go on Eurosport News, go on their Facebook, go on their Twitter. Watch out for the Twitter front because more awesomeness.